what is the expected value of the exponential distribution, and that's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Let's just get a couple of quick things out of the way before we get into the meat of the lesson. We'll say that x is an exponentially distributed random variable with parameter lambda. That's what this notation means. I'm hoping, if you're watching this video, that you've already been introduced to the exponential distribution, but if not, I recommend checking out my video overview of the distribution. I'll leave a link to that in the description. You should recognize this. This is the probability density function, or PDF, of the exponential distribution. It's equal to zero for negative values of x, and it's equal to lambda e to the negative lambda x for non-negative values of x. And remember that lambda is a constant. It's called the parameter or rate parameter. All right, now something that's of course vital to this lesson is recalling the definition of the expected value of a continuous random variable. It is the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of the probability density function evaluated at x multiplied by x integrated with respect to x. And you should be familiar with the expected value of discrete random variables, and with that in mind, this should look somewhat familiar. Just like with discrete random variables, this is the sum of weighted outcomes. x is the outcome, and then the probability density function evaluated at x is the weight of the outcome. So we add up all those weighted outcomes, and we get our expected value which some of you might know for an exponential random variable with parameter lambda, the expected value is 1 over lambda. And that's pretty cool, but it's a lot cooler when you can see why this is true. That's what we'll be going through together in today's lesson. All right, so let's get right to it. And remember, the expected value of a distribution is the average over a large number of outcomes. So as you run more and more trials, the average of all the outcomes will get closer and closer to the expected value. In this case, we know that that expected value is 1 over lambda, but let's see why that's true. Using, of course, this beautiful definition, and I'm going to change this to be black. And just bring it down a line. Alright, so first things first, we want to substitute our actual PDF in for this f of x. But that immediately brings about a small complication, because our PDF takes on different values depending on the piece of the domain we're looking at. So we're going to have to split this integral up. First, we'll have an integral that covers the first piece of the domain, from negative infinity to zero. And in this piece of the domain, what is the PDF equal to? Well, it's equal to zero. So this will be the integral of zero times x dx. And then the other piece of the integral will take care of the rest of the domain, which is from zero to positive infinity. On this piece of the domain, our probability density function is equal to lambda e to the negative lambda x. So we'll write that, lambda e to the negative lambda x, and then of course it's getting multiplied by x, and then dx. All right, good start. We are well on our way. So what is all this gonna be equal to? Well, this integral simplifies quite nicely. This is just an integral of zero, which is equal to zero. So we're done with that part completely. All we have left is the integral from zero to infinity of lambda e to the negative lambda x times x dx. And I'm going to take this constant lambda out in front of the integral. So now we've got the integral of e to the negative lambda x times x dx. Now here's a situation where we've got the product of two functions and we don't really know how to integrate this product. We've got our exponential function and then this linear function x. So this is a very typical situation where we're going to want to use integration by parts in order to get an integral that we can evaluate. If you're watching this lesson, I'm assuming you're already somewhat familiar with integration by parts and just might need a bit of a refresher. It's sort of like an advanced form of u substitution. We're going to let one of these functions be equal to u, and then we're going to take its derivative to find du. And then we're going to let one of these functions be equal to dv, and we're going to take its integral to find v. And then applying integration by parts, this integral up here will be equal to our lambda out front multiplied by u times v evaluated from zero to infinity. Those are just the same bounds from our integral 
minus the integral from zero to infinity of v du. So this is the type of expression we're going to end up with applying integration by parts, which means it doesn't really matter what u v is because we'll be able to evaluate that no problem, but we want to make sure that v du is something we can integrate. And again, remember that one of these functions will be u and one will be dv. So one's going to be differentiated and one will be integrated. And we want to hopefully end up with something simpler as v du that we can integrate. The first thing you might notice is that it doesn't really matter where we put the exponential function. Whether you integrate the exponential function or differentiate it, you pretty much end up with the same sort of thing. However, this linear function of x, we could simplify by differentiating it because its derivative is just one dx. So with that in mind, let's set u equal to x. That way we can take its derivative, which gives us one dx. And then that leaves our exponential function e to the negative lambda x to be dv. But we're going to integrate this with respect to x, so we've also got to include our dx in there. So now we have completely represented our integral in terms of u and v. Now let's go ahead and integrate this dv. That's going to give us negative 1 over lambda multiplied by e to the negative lambda x because when we integrate the exponential function, we just keep that same function, but then we have to divide by the derivative of the exponent. And now we can apply integration by parts and follow this formula here. So this will be equal to our lambda out front, can't forget that, and then that's getting multiplied by u times v, which is x times all of this. So that's x multiplied by negative one over lambda e, to the negative lambda x, and this is being evaluated from zero to infinity. And then we've got to subtract the integral of v du. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this now because it's taking up space and we don't really need it. So now we can move this over. So then we subtract the integral from zero to infinity of v du. So that's this stuff dx. So we've got negative one over lambda multiplied by e to the negative lambda x dx and then close that bracket. All right, so there is our integration by parts, and we can see here we've got something we can integrate now, so we are good to go. To simplify things quickly, we can multiply this lambda through both terms, which will cancel out with that one over lambda and that one over lambda. And that leaves us with this, which doesn't look too bad. See, we've got a negative e to the negative lambda x here. Let's just pull out that negative. So we'll have a negative one times negative one. So that's just gonna become a plus. All right, now what is all this stuff equal to? Well, let's rewrite this just a little bit. We'll have x in the numerator, but since this is a negative exponent, we can send that straight down to the denominator, this negative e to the lambda x. The exponent is now positive since it's in the denominator. And then this is getting evaluated from zero to infinity. And then for this integral, we've just got to integrate e to the negative lambda x. That's easy enough. We'll have negative one over lambda multiplied by e to the negative lambda x. We already did this integral earlier, and then this is going from zero to infinity. Now this is definitely the trickier piece of the two. What's happening to this expression as x goes to infinity? Well, the numerator is obviously approaching infinity since the numerator is just x. The denominator is approaching negative infinity. So we've got infinity over negative infinity, that's an indeterminate form. But thankfully, to evaluate the limit as this expression approaches infinity, we can use L'Hopital's rule. So instead of looking at this expression as x approaches infinity, we will look at the quotient of the derivatives. So the derivative of x is just one, and then in the denominator, the derivative of negative e to the lambda x is negative lambda times e to the lambda x. Then what is happening to this expression as x approaches infinity? Well, this e to the lambda x in the denominator is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it's getting multiplied by negative lambda, so it's approaching negative infinity in the denominator, which means that this whole expression is approaching zero, because one is getting divided by a larger and larger number. 
so the limit is equal to zero, which means that the limit of our original expression as x approaches infinity is also zero. So this whole expression from zero to infinity is equal to zero minus, well, what's the value of this expression at x equals zero? That gives us a zero in the numerator, so that's just zero. In the denominator, we'd end up having negative one, but zero over negative one, that's zero, so we're done with that part. Then I'll change the color of this and just put it off to the side in case you wanna look at it again. Now we've just got to evaluate this part, and this one's a bit easier. What is this expression approaching as x approaches positive infinity? Well, the only x in the expression is right here. We see that this e has a negative exponent. So as x approaches infinity, this e to the negative lambda x is going to be approaching zero, which means, of course, that this whole expression will be approaching zero as x approaches infinity. So we've got zero minus, what is this expression equal to when x equals zero? Well, let's just write it out. We've got negative one over lambda multiplied by e to the negative lambda times zero. All right, finally, what is all of this equal to? We've got zero minus zero, we can just ignore that. And then e to the negative lambda times zero is e to the zero, which is one. So we're just left with minus negative one over lambda. Minus a negative, that's a positive. So this is, it's beautiful, positive one over lambda. And that, my friends, is the expected value of the exponential distribution. If x is an exponentially distributed random variable, as we set up here with parameter lambda, then the expected value is one over lambda. And man, that's a pretty fun integral as well. Really gotta get down and dirty for that one. And I suppose that's the end of the story. Using the probability density function of the exponential distribution and the definition of the expected value of a continuous random variable, we're able to complete this integration, which we had to split up due to the piecewise nature of the PDF. And then we apply some integration by parts, use some L'Hopital's rule in order to work out this infinity over negative infinity indeterminate form. And then we end up at last at our answer, one over lambda is the expected value. So I hope this video helped you understand why the expected value of the exponential distribution is one over lambda. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Here the sun can go